by Bitflag, we're going to talk about leukodystrophies in general. And as the name implies, there's something wrong with the development of white matter. And on MR imaging, leukodystrophies have symmetrical involvement of the white matter. When you think of the inherited metabolic disorders, you can classify them as primarily gray matter involvement, for example, with the basal ganglia in Lee or the cortex in Melas. There can be involvement of both gray matter and white matter, or you can have a leukodystrophy with primarily white matter involvement. And in the past, the leukodystrophies have been divided in demyelinating and dysmyelinating diseases. In demyelination, there is breakdown of already formed myelin, and in dysmyelination, there is no normal formation of myelin. And we talked about myelin in several previous vlogs. And when you look to the myelin at a molecular level, you can see that it's a very fatty substance consisting for about 75% of lipids. So diseases affecting the lipid metabolism can lead to leukodystrophies. In the 90s, when I was a teenager, there was a movie based on a true story. The boy Lorenzo was diagnosed with X-linked adrenal leukodystrophy and his parents searched for a cure and they didn't have a medical or chemical background. And they came up with Lorenzo's oil, which consisted of two long chain fatty acids and they added it to his diet and this oil slowed down the progression of Lorenzo's disease and Lorenzo lived much longer than the doctors had predicted. The main reason to do imaging when you suspect someone of having a leukodystrophy is to confirm the diagnosis so that there is a leukodystrophy. If you are lucky you can have a specific pattern and test for a specific gene. But more commonly, you can send the case to an expert in your vicinity who can come up with a differential diagnosis and test for those specific genes. Or you can just do whole exome sequencing looking for the abnormal gene and abnormal protein. And the definition of leukodystrophy has been fine-tuned and evolved over the years. As I already mentioned, there is selective or primary involvement of the white matter, and it has to be genetically determined. So, diseases that are neoplastic or inflammatory are not leukodystrophies. If there is a genetic abnormality, it's a leukodystrophy. And both the genetic and the acquired white matter diseases can be referred to as a leuk encephalopathy. And to make things even more complicated, there are leukodystrophies that have the term leuk encephalopathy in their name because it wasn't known at the time that there was a genetic problem underlying the disease. And the second part of the definition is a very important update compared to the 90s and to the Lorenzo's oil time with the focus on myelin and the oligodendrocyte. Because with all the advances in medicine, it has been found that many leukodystrophies are primarily a microglial problem or a problem with the astrocyte, or even a vascular problem, so with the neurovascular unit. So if you only focus on the myelin and the oligodendrocytes and on remyelination, you're never going to find an effective cure for the leukodystrophies. As I said on MRI, you can establish if it's a leukodystrophy, 
and a key feature is that it's symmetrical and there are also different patterns so if there's a predilection for the parieto occipital region you can for example think of adrenoleukodystrophy which occurs in the posterior part in 85 percent whereas anterior involvement is more in favor of a metachromatic leukodystrophy and if you have seen a leukodystrophy on MRI you can look up this very nice article in radiographics 2019 and come up with a differential diagnosis it's not very useful to know this by heart because it are rare diseases and if you don't work at a specific children's hospital or a metabolic center it's not very useful to have these diseases on the top of your head you can also classify the leukodystrophies based on the cell involved or you can classify them on the organelle, so the part of the cell that is involved. And there are different classifications, so macroscopy radiological, cell type or organelle. And I've put some arrows in this slide to show that there is not a clear linear relationship between the radiological pattern and the underlying cell and organelle problem. But hopefully in the future things will become more clearer. As I said, leukodystrophies are rare, so it's not very useful to know them all by heart. But understanding the pathogenesis improves the understanding of the physiology of the white matter and that is the reason that I'm going to talk about the most common leukodystrophies in the next Brain Bit by Bit vlogs. And I'm going to start with X-linked adrenal leukodystrophy. So I do hope you will stay tuned.